Good evening and welcome to this special live stream from Monavisa Christian School in Watsonville, California. My name is Devin Kleffer and I am one of the faculty members at MVC and we are so grateful that you are joining us either live tonight or watching the recording of this live stream. Tonight we're going to be talking about athletics at MVC and that goes all the way from our middle school through our high school and tonight we've got some great folks that are going to give some insights into the athletic programs. Let me first introduce to you Director of Athletics, Mr. Matt Coleman. Mr. Coleman, welcome. Thank you. It's an honor to be here tonight. We are stoked that you're with us. We've also got a couple of Mustang student athletes with us. We've got Luke and Luis are also with us this evening. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thank you. Thank you. And from the parent perspective, we have Lisa Ponzio, who has a student athlete. And Lisa, thanks for taking time out of your schedule tonight to uh, come and hang out with us. And thank you for inviting me. Well, listen, folks, as always, if you have been part of previous live streams, you know that we're going to go through the next few moments and we're going to have a bit of an open Q&A session. If something comes up that you would like answered, please feel free to just type that into the Q&A box that is down on the lower right hand side of your screen. We have got some tech experts that are either going to respond to you via chat or they'll drop it in the live doc that I've got before me and we will try to answer it on air. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into this tonight. And Matt, let me begin with you. Tell us a little bit about what it means to be a student athlete at MVC. You know, uh, being a student athlete at MVC is uh, one about being Christ-centered in everything that we do. You know, we talk about that in every department of being Christ-centered, but yet being competitive at the same time. A lot of people think that being Christ-centered and competitive don't go together, and oh, they do go well together. And so it's all about being competitive, uh, being involved in a com uh, community that is larger than yourself, being a part of something that is bigger than yourself, and uh, being able to juggle not only being on a team in relationships, but academics at the same time. So being a well-balanced student is what a student athlete is all about. I love that. You've also got a philosophy that is really at the heartbeat of everything that we do through our athletic program. And that is what you call the, the 3D approach, the 3D athlete. So can you just give us a snapshot of what that means? Yeah, so our approach is three-dimensional, meaning that it's body, mind, and spirit. And so each dimension has areas that we focus in. So the first dimension is the strength, the cardio, the power, the speed, the quickness, the, the tactics, the, the repetition, the techniques of what it is to play that sport. You know, it's the physicality. Um, a lot of schools do that well. But then when you get into the second dimension, that's really what separates us from other schools. And that's the body and the mind, um, the mental part of it. So that second dimension, you're talking about motivation. So part of our privilege as athletic staff and coaches is to find out how each student athlete is motivated because everybody here tonight, we're all motivated a little bit of a different way. So for us to get our student athletes to respond the best way, we need to find out what makes them tick and what'll get them there to that next level. So in that second dimension, we deal with their confidence levels, their emotions. How do they keep those in check? Uh, team cohesion, th those relationships of people that they are teammates with and locking arm in arm together during the season that maybe they don't see during the school day. It's not their same friend group. Uh, and then goal setting. Uh, what are the goals that they want to accomplish, whether that's competing at the collegiate level or just being a part of something bigger than themselves? So you've got that first dimension and second dimension, the body and the mind. And then you go to the third dimension, which is the heart or what we call the spirit. And that's coaching beyond the jersey to the heart. So where is their identity? Um, is their identity wrapped up in only that sport? Because if it is, we want to show them that there is so much more than just a football player or a lacrosse player or a tennis player, that they are a unique creation of Christ. And what does that mean? What about their character and their significance and their self-worth and their values and their purpose? That's really loaded, but I'm just telling you, that's what we focus on in our three-dimensional approach here at NBC. I, I love that, especially the, the second and third dimension, which I think so easily gets overlooked by 
um, so many schools at both the high school and even the collegiate level. Guys, let me come to you. Luke, let me come to you first. And then Luis, I'll, I'll follow up with you. But Luke, from your perspective, you have been uh, part of NBC Athletics for a while now. You're part of the basketball program. You guys just wrapped up your season a couple nights ago. From your perspective, what does it mean to be part of the NBC Athletics program at NBC? Yeah, like you said, I've played Monte Vista basketball for four years now. And um, I've always felt that my coaches really care about me. And I don't just mean that they care about me dropping 30 points or they care about me working the hardest. And yes, they push me and want to see me succeed. But I also notice how they encourage me to act and they care about how I treat my teammates. They encourage me to thank my family and my friends for watching my games. They care about my character. And my basketball coach has always told us that we aren't just a team, that we're a family. And I think that's one of the biggest differences between coaching here at Monta Vista and coaching at other schools is that in Monta Vista sports where we build a family. Mm. Yeah, well said, well said. Luis, how about you from your perspective? And you play a couple of different sports, but what does it mean from your perspective to be part of this program? Well, to be part of this program means you're entering a well, a welcoming family. I mean, you see everyone, your coaches inviting you in, you see the parents inviting you in as part of their family. And obviously you have your teammates as your own brotherhood or family as well. And you could see like the parents themselves are a team. So the team is more, is more than just the actual team playing on the field or on the court itself. But we're just an overall loving, inviting family that's ready to work and ready to do everything we can all through Christ and through our coaching staff and everything. It's a fun experience. Yeah, thank you for saying that because I think that's one of the things that I've seen not only my time coaching at NBC, but even as a faculty member, is that there really is not just within a team, the athletes on that team bring each other up, but really it's exciting when one team goes and supports another team. And, you know, Luke, I know the basketball teams do that. You guys were at the, the girls varsity game cheering them on. And I know that they have attended the boys varsity games when their schedule allowed to. And it's really fun to, to see that support of whether it's the same sport or different sports, but student athletes supporting one another wherever they're at. Lisa, let me bring you into the conversation. You know, you have the unique vantage point as a parent and so I just love to know from your perspective, what are some of the things that you've noticed as a parent and how that, that has really played a part of your own son's development um, as a Mustang athlete? Well, James is in his fourth year now as a student athlete at Monte Vista. He started in eighth grade. And I have to say what Coach uh, Coleman was saying about being a part of something bigger. I think James has really learned to appreciate being part of a team, supporting his teammates. It's not all about him. You know, as he goes from being a child to an adult, that's an important thing to learn. Um, and even in fact, being really a sportsman, because when they go to other schools, they represent Monta Vista and they want to be sportsmanlike and also congratulate other teams and learn about, hey, you know, this is all about everyone being a great athlete and uh, kind of developing their skills. Um, and so I think he's learned a lot about that. And it makes me very proud. I, I love that. And I want to come back to some of the things you touched on. I see uh, as we're going along here, we've got Coach AJ that's joining us. And Coach, you literally fit us into a window between two other important things you've got. So first off, thanks for joining us tonight. It's good to see you. We can't hear you yet. You're actually you're actually muted. Oh, yes. I apologize. I'll let you talk. But um, no, my pleasure. I'm happy to join you guys. Had some technical difficulties trying to get in. So I'm here. It, it happens. We're glad that you were able to make it. Listen, um, you are the person that oversees really the training and the fitness programs for not just our PE courses, but also just our entire athletics program. And so I guess the first thing that I'd love to know is how do you differentiate between the various needs of athletes in one sport or at one level and the athletes of another sport or at another level physically? Um, first thing we want to do, of course, is baseline everyone to see where they are or aren't, um, what imbalances we may need to correct or improve upon um, based on their respective sport or sports, as many of our student athletes do play multiple sports, you know, on a yearly basis. So we really want to make sure not only are they staying prepared for their season coming up, but when they do get into their season, how do we modify and improve that athlete so that way they can sustain throughout the longevity of a, 
of a season, especially with the courses and their, their studies, their practices to, you know, prevent injury, but also bounce back from injuries that are going to be naturally occurring in those respective sports, you know, and those that can or are able to um, advance sooner than later than others, then those training programs are modified accordingly and placed in certain groups. Like we'll have bucket A, bucket B or C based on their level of understanding of movements, programming, and so forth. So that way they can continue to progress and not stay within the pack and they can keep on being challenged. I, I love that. And I love the fact that it's so adaptable to each individual athlete. I think that that is such a, a key to the success of our programs. And Coach AJ, let me stay with you just a little bit more because, and I just learned this this afternoon, but we have this fancy thing called the conduct training platform. <laughs> can you give us a little bit of insight about what that is? Um, one of my favorite toys to play with. So conduct allows us to monitor our athletes anywhere from daily wellness checks. So that way we can know where they are mentally, emotionally, and physically, you know, so those go out to them. Um, you know, we can look at what metrics that our athletes are improving upon during their program. Like presently they're going through a six week strength conditioning program and you can see which athletes are progressing faster than others, you know, based on other factors previously to that, you know, and the, shocking part to them is that they're moving more weight or more loads now previously than first semester because we did a lot of foundational work where we implemented these movements but now they're all coupled in as a program you know so they'll come in they're like man you know i'm really feeling this coach i appreciate it and they can really see where the foundation is helping them perform their squats their deadlifts and the conduct really lets us see okay Week one, you were here. Week two, you were here. And week three, and fast forward to when we test them and baseline them again, their numbers should be up in those movements that we have in the program. So it's a beautiful tool. Um, a lot of professional teams utilize it, big universities. So it's great to have the access to it on a high school level because by the time some of these student athletes go on to college and do have the opportunity to play a college sport, they'll be accustomed to metric and being data-driven so that way they can push. It's a great stimulus, right? You see something like, oh, I can push harder so that way my numbers could go up. Right, right. I, I love that. And I think that that's one of the things I really want to underscore here, that this is not something that you're going to find at an average high school program. This is something that the, the biggest of the big D1 schools, and you even mentioned professional athletes and professional organizations are using. So we're super fortunate to have this a, a part of things. It also kind of brings up another thing, and, and Matt, let me come back to you, and that is just our overall facilities at NBC. And so for those that are watching and maybe haven't yet been out to campus, can you just give us a, an overview of what facilities NBC has to offer for our student athletes? I could go all night long about our facilities. I remember the first time that I came out of campus, I was just in awe of, of everything. Um, you know, when you walk onto campus, you, uh, you see, even before, just on the outside of our campus, our beautiful varsity baseball and softball fields, along with our tennis courts that are just across the street. But then when you enter our campus, uh, you know, inside of the gates, you see that we have the sand pit volleyball court and you walk past our beautiful uh, state-of-the-art main gymnasium. And I say main gymnasium because we also have an auxiliary gymnasium as well. So that when we do tournaments, uh, both middle school and high school can use uh, those those gyms. And they're just we're uh, I, I think we're honored to have two facilities like that. Uh, as far as indoor facilities, a lot of schools only have one. And so we have a few. And when you walk past both of our gyms, then you go to where Coach AJ works. It's kind of the hub of our athletic program. It's our sports performance center. We, we actually have student athletes that go on to play collegiately and they come back during the break and say, we don't even have as good of uh, a sports performance center as you all have you know, here at the high school level. And um, then as you walk past our sports performance center, you kind of go to our practice field and it's the main walkway to our stadium and you'll see our JV baseball and softball fields. And when you start walking towards our stadium and you see kind of the outline of the front, uh, you know that there's going to be something special there. And there's nothing like walking through that, that corridor, that entrance there, and you hear that bell, that mission bell that rings. 
um, knowing that especially on Friday nights when our football team walks through there. And when you walk through that beautiful place and then the sky opens up and you see our Mustang statue right in front and you see our state-of-the-art blue track and our new turf field overlooking uh, and you see the, the hills behind it. It's uh, you're just in awe. And I have other athletic directors that come to our school every few years uh, when they have to play us in football. And every single time they come, they mention uh, about our beautiful stadium. We're just very blessed uh, to be. And honestly, what I feel is something that is better than even small universities or colleges. Mm. Yeah, well said. Luis, you are part of our football program. From your perspective, what's it like coming down those stairs and into the stadium on a game night? Oh, man, there's nothing like it. I mean, personally, I think it's comparable to Clemson's bus ride into their entrance or, you know, Florida State's Tomahawk Chop. But it's, it's just an unreal feeling, especially coming, you know, for me, seeing my siblings do the same walk as I did this past year. It's just something special, something like it. Awesome. I, and I agree, having to be in there and getting to see you guys come down from the stands it's super cool. Uh, Luis, let me stick with you. And then Luke, obviously I want to hear from you as well, but Luis, from your perspective, and of course, you know, it, we can talk about our athletics program all night long and all the great mini um, venues that we have on campus and facilities that we have on campus. But another important question is because you guys are student athletes, talk to us a little bit about balancing that role of student athlete and how have you found the workload to be as a student athlete? Well, obviously, you know, we're student athletes, student comes first before the athlete part of it. So it's our responsibility to get our studies done before we even get out to the field or, you know, to the court in Luke's case. But obviously there's some things you need to master, such as time management, which is perfect and it's unique because we have to manage our time well. And obviously it prepares us for college, which is the next step of life from high school. And there's also things like communication. And like I personally, I've found myself, I'm not the most loud person in the world, but communicating to not only my coaches and my teammates, but also to my teachers. They need to know what's going on, telling them to like, get my due dates correct, make sure everything's in on time. It's a really, like, I need that like skill to, you know, succeed in life. And I'm happy to master here in high school, especially through that athletic program and through being a student athlete. Yeah. Well said. I love that you touched on those soft skills. Luke, how about you balancing the load of school, but also athlete? How have you found that to be? Yeah, like Louis said, life gets busy, right? Like it's hard to find, it's hard to be able to stay dedicated to your sport while also balancing a homework load and maintaining a social life. Um, but I think here at Monta Vista, our athletics program really encourages um, and develops our, our time management. And I, I found uh, coming here as a freshman that it's something that I picked up pretty quickly um, because I found that when I was in a sports season, I became more intentional, intentional about getting things done. And so it, um, it, through the program, it became natural to a lot time for each of those things. Um, like I said, de being dedicated to my sport, having a social life and getting my homework done. And, um, I became more deliberate about making sure I need, I did everything I needed to do without like losing sleep or compromising on my personal time. I, I love that. And Lisa, I want to bring you back into this because once again, you know, you have the perspective of, the parent that's seeing your child go through this, both as a student and an athlete. And so when you look at your son, James, and, and perhaps even some of his friends that you've come to know over the years of him being at NBC and you being part of the NBC family, what, what insights do you have to share as far as the workload that the student athletes are able to balance as part of this program? Well, frankly, I would encourage parents to ask their their students whether they might want to participate in athletics and not be afraid that in fact it might cause more stress or uh, you know take too much time because it really turns out to be the opposite because it actually helps them really structure their day and it energizes them and it gives them something that really lifts their spirit. James comes home happy every day from practice and he has a story to tell. And I, I think to me, you know, and then he knows, okay, he's in the door, he's got to take a shower, he's got to have dinner, and then he's got to do his homework. There's no time for video games or any of that, you know, he's structured, and he goes to bed. And I, I just think that that does teach him skills that he will use the rest of his life in school and, and when he works and when he has a family, you know, and has to come home and play with kids and 
and uh, get his exercise and all that. So I think it's it's something I would really encourage parents not to be afraid of. I, I love that each of you just touched on these soft skills in a variety of ways, whether, you know, time management is obviously a theme that came out of it. Luis, you also mentioned just the communication and the self-advocacy skills that, you know, that things that transfer away from the court, away from the field, which I think is, is so important, right? As young adults getting ready to go out into the real world very soon. Matt, let me come back to you because we do have both a middle school and a high school on our campus. We are six through 12. And so what sports are available for middle schoolers? Let's start with the middle school and then we can look at high school. Yeah, so uh, we typically, um, we have for middle school, um, we have, we start out with boys soccer, um, girls basketball, and uh, co-ed both boys and girls uh, cross country. Um, and that's in the fall. That's in a typical year. I, I wonder how many years it's been since we've been in a typical school year. Um, but when you get into the winter, uh, there's flag football uh, that's co-ed for both boys and girls, uh, boys basketball and girls soccer. And then when you get into uh, the spring, uh, there's co-ed track and field. Yeah, which is a great mix of everything. And if I'm not mistaken, the seasons are short enough where they're really encouraging the students to sample a little bit of everything. So it's not typically like some of the longer high school seasons. Is that correct? That is correct. In fact, this year, because we didn't know what it was going to be like uh, due to COVID, uh, we had four week training sessions and um, the Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, they were training. And then Thursdays were reserved really for scrimmages. Mm -hmm. That's great. And then let's talk a little bit about high school athletics and as far as some of the opportunities that are available there. Yeah, so when you look in the fall, you know, your typical school year, uh, you have football, uh, that's both for boys and girls, you have girls volleyball, and you have girls tennis, and then we have both boys and girls cross country and sideline cheer that is uh, for our for our football uh, program. And then when you get into the winter, um, you're looking at both boys and girls basketball, boys and girls soccer, you have uh, boys and girls wrestling, sideline or winter cheer uh, for basketball and then competitive cheer, which is outside of the basketball uh, season. Um, and then when you get into our spring season, you have baseball, you have softball, you have girls lacrosse, you have boys tennis, you have both boys and girls track, and you have uh, both boys and girls golf and swimming. Um, should I name more? <laughs> I mean, I, th I think that you have created quite the laundry list of opportunities. No one will certainly come to NBC and think there's not much to do here extracurricularly. <laughs> not at all. In fact, we were talking about earlier before our student athletes are some of the busiest people I know, but they love it. Yes. Yes. Coach AJ, let me come back to you because I know, like I said, you were fitting us in between a couple of other important appointments. And so before you take off, I just love to know from you, um, if folks are watching this and thinking, I I'm still not convinced that NBC is the place I want to go. What is something that you would tell a potential athlete, whether it's a middle school athlete or a high school athlete that is still on the fence about joining NBC? Oh, I would say if you're serious about getting better as a, on, from a mental, physical and spiritual standpoint as an athlete, because you need to be optimal. You know, you, you know, everyone's balance is different as far as, you know, equalizers and so forth. But if you are an athlete that's on the fence, middle school or high school, and you're looking for a place to grow individually and within a community where you're going to have a family support system at the same time, feel challenged academically um, and in your sport, then this is the right place because you're going to get a foundation like some of our athletes mentioned earlier, you know, time management skills, communication skills, you know, that work, that balance to have that structure, like Lisa mentioned, you're going to get that. And in the sports performance component, you are going to receive a solid foundation of understanding how your body should function accordingly and in respect to your sport. You know, you're going to learn proper techniques of movement patterns, lifting, nutritional advice, and the whole gambit is just a, an array of things that, you know, when I, I look at it and I remember when Matt and I first spoke months ago and I was just like, wow, you know, this is very interesting because a lot of schools do not have the luxury to have 
let alone a facility to conduct such training, but to have a sports performance coach available to them. Um, you know, my years of expertise really play a big part. And, you know, like Lisa mentioned, structure. First thing that pops into my head is my military days. Yeah. It's like, whoa. And you know that as well, that structure, like towing the line at 4 a.m. to make sure your bed has all four corners done and so forth that you have to bounce a quarter off of it. You know, so I really love everything about that. And the athletes know that do take sports performance and they're like, Coach AJ pushes us, but he's pushing us because life is going to challenge us as well. You know, it's not to beat you down. It's to really make you stronger mentally and physically to bounce back and push through adversity. So yes. you have to be up for the challenge. And if that's what you're up for, then come along, be a Mustang. Let's gallop away. Let's get right or get left. Let's go. <laughs> there you go. Coach AJ, thanks again for popping in and hanging out with us. Appreciate all your insights. My pleasure. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good night, sir. <laughs> yep. Luke, let me come back to you. Some of the things that Coach AJ was talking about there, just being pushed, but being pushed in a way that's both encouraging and showing progress toward your goal. It, is that something that you personally experienced within the program? Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Um, you know, I really feel at Monta Vista that I've developed a solid work ethic. And um, part of that is learning not only that it's about pushing myself and being the best athlete that I can be, but also learning at the same time to encourage my teammates and the people around me and push them to be the best athletes they can be. I think, I think that's really important in the sports world and in our program that um, we're not only pushing ourselves to be the best, but pushing others to be their best too. Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely agree with that. Luis, let me ask you, you know, you, you touched on your time management and things. You mentioned communication. If there's a student athlete watching this right now, what's something else that you would personally want to share from your experience that might help make the decision for them to become a Mustang? Well, again, it's like, it's a big old family, especially within the athletic program. And as coach AJ said, in sports performance, it's facility every day we're working out. It's almost like a competition with how much, we're, how hard we're working. And as, at the end of the day, you know, we want to be the best we can be, but at the same time, we want the person next to us to be the best they can be. And all the like we're competing, like, oh, who could squat more? Who could do this? We're there to congratulate them. And we're right next to them the whole time supporting them. Not just literally, you know, if they're doing a heavyweight with something, but we're there with them spiritually. Our coaches are there with us spiritually. They know like they're more than just a coach to us or like a mentor or even a friend to us at some points. And that's what's very unique about our school is that our coaches aren't just there to coach us on the field. They're there to coach us in life. They're there to coach us in faith, which is very unique. Not many schools do that. Yeah, I, I love that answer. And I think, you know, one of the things that came to my mind as you were giving that response, Luis, was, you know, one of the things that impressed me when I first came to Monta Vista a little over a decade ago was that there was cohesion between, in the case when I coached football and, and baseball, but there was cohesion between the senior varsity players and those coming in as freshmen. And there wasn't the hazing that I had seen at previous schools as both a player and as a coach. And it was really kind of fascinating to see that the older guys absolutely took this job and this honor with a lot of uh, seriousness and responsibility where they wanted those guys. They were just coming into the program to feel welcomed and, and part of the greater picture of what it means to be a Mustang. Luke, how about you? What, what's something that you would want to make sure that someone is watching this and maybe they haven't yet said yes to NBC? What's something that you would want them to know? Um, I think I would want them to know that playing a sport at Monta Vista, it's so much more than just playing a sport. Um, you learn to work hard, you build bonds with your teammates, and you become a well-rounded person just by playing a sport at Monta Vista. And being a senior about to graduate, I can tell you that it's a journey that goes by so fast. And I'm so thankful for everything that being an athlete here at Monta Vista has taught me. And I would encourage anyone else to give it a try because you will be changed for the better. Yeah, well said. Lisa, how about you? You've done such a great job really giving us the, the parents lens to look through tonight. And from your perspective, if there are some parents that maybe see even on the fence right now, what is something that you would absolutely want them to hear before we signed off tonight? Well, honestly, I could talk for an hour about that and they could call me anytime. I'd be happy to go into more detail. I would say that 
Coach Coleman wasn't exaggerating. This campus is strikingly beautiful. And I think it creates a really um, pleasant environment for these kids. I think they feel blessed and fortunate. They feel like they have every opportunity. And that's, I think that is a blessing. I think the small school size is wonderful because they get a lot of personal attention. Every athlete gets to participate. It doesn't matter how fast you are, how good of a player you get time. Uh, to compete. And I think that's important. Everyone feels part of the team. They don't feel like they're, you know, not included. Um, I think it creates, it's a built-in family. He has wonderful friendships and continues even after graduating. I think that they will stay connected. It's that kind of a friendship. It's a mentoring opportunity, not only for him, for younger athletes, but also, you know, he's been mentored by older athletes, which is a wonderful gift. And, and the coaches are great. Um, and I think the Christian values really does help them create an identity as a team. I think they all share a value system and that's uh, really wonderful to be around. And it's lastly, I'd say, I feel it's very safe. Mm -hmm. Every single person that is on the team and all the families are great people. I've, I've developed great friendships with the families. So thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you for that. Uh, Matt, I, of course, I'm going to ask you that same question. But before we do, we do have some folks that are obviously wondering, hey, you know, my child, my athlete has been working hard in their sport and is considering maybe the opportunity to play beyond the high school level. And so what are some ways that I guess that one MVC might look a little differently about being able to promote athletes, um, but also to is it more often than not that our, our graduates have an opportunity to play at a variety of levels at the college level? Yeah, absolutely. I think it, uh, people think it's um, that if you go to a smaller school that you get, uh, you don't get looked at. And when you walk into our main gym, the day part gym, gymnasium, um, and you see that college board with over 60 athletes uh, in the past few years, that have gone on to play at uh, anywhere from NAIA to Division One, um, you know, college athletics. Or you look on our gym lobby and in on the walls, these huge color poster, you know, posters of people that you know that have gone to Wheaton College, or Sacramento State, or USC, um, you know, or Oregon. Um, you see that we uh, do make an impact and we do give the opportunities for student athletes to get to that next level. Now, what's even better than that is we've added a tool uh, this past year called Sports Recruits. And, you know, a lot of families uh, in various sports, I was one of those parents, um, you know, before Sports Recruits where you would pay uh, anywhere from a couple hundred to a couple thousand dollars uh, to have a recruiting service for you. And uh, we have that built in here at MBC. And so if they are a student athlete here, they get that for free. And so really it's a guide and an opportunity where we have people that work with the student athlete and the parents to kind of show where their goals uh, want to be um, and kind of show where they want to go to school, what major. That's a big part of it is pick your major, you know, the right school academically first and foremost. Um, and athletics will fall with that. And uh, so we have the tools uh, for them to be in contact with any of the college coaches in the United States, and we can get out those reports in a mere of one to two minutes. Uh, and we guide them along the process. And, uh, and Sports Recruits is a group that we work with. And uh, we are actually the only school within Central California to be working with uh, Sports Recruits. So we have that ability uh, for them to expand. If they want to get to that next level, uh, we can help them do that and get those contacts. Yeah. And I think one of the things just to kind of, if someone was listening, but didn't maybe pick up on it, one of the things that you mentioned is really making sure that it's a good fit for that student athlete, not maybe just with the sport, but also the academic side of things. And I know that yeah. you and our guidance team work hand in hand to really make sure that kids aren't falling through the cracks or they're not getting set up for uh, anything but success at their next part of their journey. Well, Matt, as we begin to kind of land the plane tonight, let me just ask you as the director of athletics, if we have a family that is on the fence about coming to MVC, what is the one thing that you would really hope that they hear before we 
wrap things up for tonight? I think, uh, and I'm looking at this from a parent perspective, because that's one of the reasons why I came here. Um, I have two daughters. I have one daughter that's a senior at Grand Canyon University, and uh, she's thriving and doing great there. And then I have a daughter that's a, that's a sophomore. And I never would have came to this school had I not thought that even without athletics, that this school didn't have a three-dimensional approach and the body, the mind, and the spirit. And so as a parent, I wanted to make sure that this was a good fit for my daughters before it was a good fit for me. And uh, what I would say to families that are considering is there's a lot of schools out there uh, that do well in that first dimension. Um, but when you look at all of those schools, look at their second and third dimensions, the mental part of it and the spiritual part of it. And look at the complete package because when my daughters graduate from MVC and I see my one daughter, she is, she is just thriving right now and she's going to stay and live in the Phoenix area, which we're so thrilled about. Um, part of why she's thriving is because of all three dimensions that were built into her, not just in you know, athletics, but in academics as well. That's what I want for my kids and, so, uh, and for my daughters. And uh, I would think that other families would want the same thing. Absolutely. Well said. Well, once again, panelists, thank you for hanging out with us tonight. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule. And then thank you, our audience who has been with us throughout this journey. There are, of course, another, I think, four or five sessions available that cover things from um, academics to visual performing arts and a host of other things that are available for you and your family and your students at NBC. We obviously hope that you will check those out. And if you have questions or you'd like to schedule a tour or be part of an upcoming group tour that we have on the calendar, all you need to do is you can call the main office or you can also um, log on and email us at admissions at mbcs.org. And one of our awesome members from our admissions team will get back in touch with you and answer any questions that you have. Once again, thanks for joining us tonight. We hope to see you as a Mustang soon. Take care. Good night.